Hello, welcome back to Banner Sushi Left Nothing. In this episode, I will be sharing the creations of this um, alien onions. So, yeah, let's get started. It's actually pretty easy. Um, it's not that complicated. I'm actually using. I started with Icosphere, um, but you can start with anything. Icosphere already kind of have this nice pattern to it, and all you need to do is just kind of work. Um, and create a flowery pattern based on this so I will be taking advantage of adaptive polygons and for adaptive polygons uh, since this is like a tissue add-on you need to have quad and to have quad we need to have subdivide to quad so this is actually quite interesting uh, you can do it Okay, let me save this first. Alien onion. If you actually just dual mesh this guy, like a sphere, you're gonna have this result, just like a soccer ball. If you plug this to that guy and plug this in, you're gonna have quad because it's a uh, it's subdividing it. And you have this uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 5 face for each icosphere. So this is already quite interesting. So let's continue. And adaptive polygon. So we need this guy as the recipient. And we need the donor. The donor can be anything. In fact, you can come up with all kind of different output and design simply by plugging the right donor so let's just use a plane and extrude region let's plug this in and this is going to be the for this on polygon and polygon of the donor and then we can use by matrix or along normal it's a uh, up to you maybe but turn on multiple extrude uh, it's actually gonna be more interesting if we use by matrix and multiple extrude and we, we use the this matrices oops let's try extruding it and scaling so we are starting to get something that's kind of interesting. Let's adjust the angle. You can see there's some kind of like a flower and it's kind of rotating. That's actually thanks to the icosphere and the subdivide to quartz. It's actually quite interesting once you understand how it works. So we are kind of replacing every face with a a cube but we have this flowery pattern and we can control a lot of things here we can rotate the polygon here as well so let's turn on shading so it's already showing now it's a it's a matter of playing around with this Let's try this multiple extrusion um, random vector. I'm gonna have three random vector plugged into the angle. Okay, now it's starting to be a little bit more interesting. We're starting to get this onion kind of looking result. You see it's how it's actually scaling down and there's a slight rotation for each one of extrusion. So this is the Z axis. I don't know, last time I can actually make this more random but not maybe not too much. Seems like each extrusion 
it's actually like a, there's like a multiplications underneath okay so let's see what we can do here uh, we can turn on join so it's gonna be joined together at this point it's actually uh, quite interesting if you're doing another extrusions you're gonna end up almost like a fractal let's reduce the number here so we can randomize a little bit there I wonder if we are doing another subdivision, whether this is going to work. And the subdivision have smooth it. We have ability to smooth it and fractal. If we increase the number of subdivision of icosphere, we get something that's rather complex and then let's plug this into the mesh viewer and let's see the output so far turn on captive so yeah at this point let's try rotating the polygon face you can actually put multiple value here as well and you get different result and you can also randomize this when working with sphere chalk especially doing this kind of modeling the topology is actually quite important if you change the, the topology of the mesh from the beginning you, can, you might end up with something completely different uh, so let's say if you're if you're using like a diamond, so instead of subdivided, maybe you use diamond pattern mesh. Plug this in. You see, it's a it's now completely different. Let's save this. I'm curious about this. I think we probably can do a little bit more. We can actually use factor in. And random number. Let's make it the same value for. Yeah, you see, start we're starting to get this this kind of onion looking result. Ah, uh, okay. If you subdivide it, it looks like that. But uh, you can always use this new cool new modifier. Weld, just weld it. Yep, uh, bevel. Oops, don't use boolean. Use bevel just before the subdivisions. So you keep that. You keep that form. So that's if you want to subdivide. Kind of curious. So, on what else we haven't done here. make this smaller yeah I think the diamond mesh completely changed the look of this so I will use a different one back to original yep this is more like the alien onions that I was showing you earlier
uh, you can make it open and close. There's actually options to remove double here as well. Remove double with a threshold. Yeah, but it's be careful with that value, but still it's kind of interesting. Turn off. I like it slightly strange looking and overlapping, just like onion. Fish, you can always remesh if you like. But that's uh, pretty much it. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of things that I haven't tried here. You can in fact kind of like randomize or use noise vector, noise displays here to displace the vertices. You get completely different look once again. So ideally, like I, I want to have like joints for each one of them and animate it using joints or bones or armatures, so we can export it out. But this is also kind of nice. If you use Blender 2.0, latest Blender, and you use just a basic material over here, you can file, export. USDZ uh, as export as USD selection only. We don't have UV yet, but you can have this alien onion, metallic looking or alien onions. So yeah, hopefully you find this useful. Let me know what you think. So try it yourself. Maybe you can come up with something completely original. Thanks again for tuning in. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye.